Good morning, everybody. It is Thursday, September 5th. I am Kenny Cams, and this is The Black Show. So for today's topic, I want to talk about feminism, but I want to approach it from a different angle than I think most men would. Um, especially in like this kind of manosphere type of online, everybody looking for drama negative. Um, it's going to be some drama, some negative here, but I hope to kind of pull this all back together. So while you're watching the video, stay with me, because especially women, stay with me, because at the end, it's going to make sense. So feminism isn't necessarily a negative thing for portions of the population. So looking on paper, on the surface, on the reality the lifestyle of being able to kind of do what you want, um, women working and like the whole, everything that feminism, the positive things that feminism represents. I completely understand women wanting that because that's what kind of everything is telling you to want. So it does make sense. And in reality, it is a better life on the surface for the woman, for sure. The part I think that we miss on this, though, is that historically, women have shaped the culture. And when women aren't actually connected to, you know, like the communities and their families, because most people and most feminists aren't really connected to the community. They're connected to their group within the community. I think a lot of feminists have a lot of chauvinistic um like kind of ideologies of how they think about it has to be separate. So it's not really about only empowering women. It's about also taking power away from everyone else. If that makes sense. And with women not being able to shape the culture properly to where everyone can thrive. Like right now the culture is shaped to where women are able to thrive. That's because feminists really have kind of taken over. I'm not sure on the dates and the times, so and I don't want to say it incorrect, but I know it was like the 70s or 80s, I think, when it got real big. But so life is pretty good for women in America compared to women around the world, I guess, on a material level, though. So when I say that, I always think I'm remember I'm saying this on a material level. So this is real surface level. This is like the things that they can do or they can buy or they can have not the things, the deeper connections and the deeper meanings of life. I think what a lot of women mistake of what guys are kind of asking them for in this kind of relationship dynamic. Um, I, I personally, I had a, it was had a conversation with a friend yesterday about this. Like, I think as black men, we're kind of in a, and I don't think black men will, will uh, acknowledge this, but it was something that, I was talking to my this my friend about I see a whole bunch of pictures from people on the internet with their families like a lot of my female friends from from college or from high school and in the black family in the white families I always see like the granddad the uncles and then the aunties and then the kids but in the black families I only see the grandmas the aunties the the you know, middle-aged cousins, and then people that are like 18, all the men are like 20-something and younger. So take my kind of perspective on this, ladies. As a as a black man, I'm like, where am I going to be at? Like, where am I at in this picture? It's so divisive between men and women, especially black men and women, which is some is purposely done. Some is like historic. You know, it's a bunch of different reasons. But bigger picture wise, I, I look at it like, damn, dog, like. I where so or where let me finish the thought. Where am I at in that? Like, where do I exist when I'm 50, 60? I don't know a lot of black men. That are like with their families at 50, 60, and I want to be. So, like, my thing was, um, I always had to dream of, like, it's called the movie Roscoe Jenkins, right, with uh, Martin Lawrence, to be that old granddad. 
I got an old granddad Hall of Fame wall. Of like that that was that's my dream to have a bunch of kids, a bunch of grandkids running around on the land, playing games and shit, so I could teach them shit like that. And like that's why I really be so hard on, and it it's, it may come over as harsh, but that's why I be so hard on women sometimes, especially black women with behavior stuff. Because I'm like, the way that y'all behave, a lot of things are not possibilities anymore. Why do I say that? So like. In, in the business I work in, of having to have business meetings, having to, I work in the entertainment and also in like a business development field. So I have to go to certain lunches, certain uh, diner, you know, I have to dinner, certain things like that where like I can't have my a liability with me because that liability can ruin my reputation. And ruin my reputation, what it'll do is, if I ruin a reputation with the wrong person, it eliminates all opportunities for something that I had no control over. If it's on me that that opportunity is lost, okay, I'm cool with that. But women, please understand how people, this is why men are so slow to try to date y'all right now, is because the way your girl moves in her personal life is a reflection of you as a man. I know y'all don't see it that way, but the rest of the society and the rest of reality does see it that way. So just because y'all don't see it that way, you can't discount it because that's what the rest of the reality is is perceiving. That if that dude's wife is out of line, then his life is probably chaotic. I I experienced that with my ex. That's why I haven't dated since then because it made me made it seem like my life was super chaotic because this person was moving chaotic. So please understand it's not we're not asking for like to be a slave or nothing. We're just asking to be a, a decent human being at the end of the day and a trustworthy is have good character. And it's so easy for women nowadays to not it's a little bit tougher for guys to not have good character because you got the threat of violence with other guys. So those guys that don't have good character, they usually just fuck over women because then it's no consequence, really. Besides the, you know, the, the it's really no consequence because usually those are the toxic guys that ladies, women like. And most of those dudes have single or came from a single mother home. Like real men don't like to argue and don't like to go back and forth and don't like to do that because one, we already stressed out from life. Life is fucking hard for black men. We try to be tough about it, but life is fucking tough, fam. Like, imagine having to come out the house and be on guard for your life 24-7. Literally. There's no break in it. The gas station, something could happen. Even coming down in the third ward, I feel a little bit more comfortable, but I know something could happen down here, too. They could think I'm trying to break in a car or something. So you, know, you know what I mean? We always have a threat of, like, something happening over our head. And our women have used that historically. It's a group. <clears throat> also, I'm gonna get on that point, but it's a it's a very big investment on y'all on our end, man. Like 2001 or 2021, I was in a completely different situation, living in a three uh three bedroom, brand new built uh, apartment. West, and then, like, literally one interaction just canceled all that and put my shit in a spiral. For nothing that was my actions. So, like, I am so, so, so hesitant to invest anything into a female. I just, like, so any all that, like, it's because I naturally do that, right? So all I did was, and I tell my young daughters all the time, I was like, I started putting that energy into the people that were immediately in my house when I grew up. So my dad passed, but my mom and my sister, I started pouring into whatever, which what, my sister, what y'all need? My two older sisters too, what y'all need? I got to do a better job with them. But it's still like that, I'd rather invest it somewhere where I know that like they're not going to just try to destroy my name after if, you know, if it goes bad. So that's that's why I'm like, it's women. Please understand that it's not like, uh, oh, he don't want to commit. Like, that's a big thing because if if when it doesn't work out, you are going to talk bad about me, and I know that. And your friends are going to encourage you to do so. 
you're going to go sleep with other men and they're going to know my business. So I'm like, I don't want no, I've experienced that before. I do not want people in my business no more. That's why I'm so like private. I'm very public on like the internet stuff or telling stories, but in my private, it's not a lot of people that can, that are around me like that. And it's for a purpose because I'm, I experienced that. I don't want to experience that again. So, and I only told that story not to, to, to defame my ex. I told that story so that women can understand the depth of why guys don't want to commit right now or don't are very very hesitant to actually date so i want to close this up a little bit or tighten this up with um it seems like black women specifically and liberal white women i've noticed have a resentment for men and talking to some of my female friends right and now getting a better perspective of like y'all day to day what y'all actually have to go through with dudes trying to talk to y'all basically all day. Basically everywhere y'all go. And in reality, I, I get that's frustrating. But that's not really, yeah, people are going to do that. Like everywhere I go, I get looked at as a criminal. And I got degrees and own a business and stuff, and I still get looked at even in my own. It's on the same building that I'm in right now. Like me and the maintenance dude, cool, cause yeah, I locked myself out once. And a couple of the the white folks in here is cool, but they still looking at me like, who is this dude? Who is he in here? And I still show up, and I don't care. A lot of women have had dudes verbally harass them. I guess they will say. But that goes both ways because, like, and my boy Wayne can, like, vouch for this. I went to Point to, to kick with Wayne for his birthday. We sitting downtown in the square. Some, like, 40-year-old white lady literally comes to me and lifts my shirt to touch my abs. So we it, it's, a, it's a societal thing because the, the guys that are doing all the catcalling and stuff are being raised in households that that's accepted. Those are typically single parent households because typically a dad would be like, shut a, hey, we don't talk to your mama like that. Or we don't talk to women like that. Or most times when it's the two parent household, that's what I'm looking for. You have a brothers and sisters and you, you, so these people are growing up around disrespect and we expect them not to be disrespectful. And it's coming from single black family mothers, single mothers. It's, it's coming from there. And no one ever wants to address it because that's a demographic where we can't criticize for some reason. But that's where it's coming from. And we know it. The statistics on jail, the statistics on uh, academics, the statistics everywhere. We have the numbers. We know what demographic is causing the problem. And I think it's to the tipping point where it's not really a solution to it because it's an epidemic and it has to just go its course. And it's sad because as a black man, I really do not know where my place is in the black family in my 50s and 60s. And I hope to still be alive then, but from the representation that I see, it's not too many that exist. So, my solution is I'm going to do like I said from the beginning, like seven years ago, I am going to get my farm, get a couple of cows and some goats and some dogs and just rock out the apocalypse, man. Just some thoughts today about feminism, y'all. So what y'all think? I might do another episode on this one, too, because I, I know I didn't get like deep, deep, deep into the topic, but it's it's kind of it's, it's a sad topic for me, man, because. I'm basically looking at my extinction and all black men daily <clears throat> are looking at our extinction and the fact that we're not, I don't see black older black men anywhere. It leads me to one logical conclusion that, Oh, it's probably going to happen to me. So it's Kenny cams y'all. I'm out. Peace.